What's going on, everybody? We've got Van Lantis here, and we've got Gail here. Now, today, we are going to be installing two Max Air fans and one window. We were going to be installing three windows, but uh, a couple of them arrived damaged, and we won't be able to install those today. So anyway, that's enough of the intro. Let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, the first thing that we're doing is we're going to cut a hole in the back for the first fan. Now in the ProMaster, we've got these ribs here that we have to deal with. So we can only have a fan in an area that we don't have a rib. We can't cut these ribs out. So the fan for over the bed is going to go right there. We've already made our measurements and we know where the fan's going to go. And Gail is up top right now. No, he's not. Gail's right there. Down. Gail is down right now, but he's already got his measurements up there. We know right where the fan is going to go. All right, I got these fantastic fan inserts off of eBay. Um, I used this on my first fan. I loved it. This is great. If you look down here, we're going to use it as a template to mark out where our fan's going to go. We're just going to take a Sharpie. We're all right along the inside of this template. All right, that's great. And then we're gonna use this template again later and you'll see that coming up. All right, next we're gonna lay in some masking tape right along where we wanna do our cut. Why would you put down masking tape if you already have a line, David? <laughs> well, that, that is a great question, Gail. We are going to be running a metal saw with a metal fence along the top of our metal roof. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to scratch up the top of our metal roof. It wouldn't matter too terribly much because this is going to end up sitting over top, but still, if we can avoid making any scratches in our roof, that will help us avoid rust later. Rust on these vans is the enemy. And I'm sorry. Sorry about the uh, lawn mowing. It is a Saturday morning, and that's Dean. He's a good neighbor, so, you know, we're not going to blame him too much for cutting his lawn early on a Saturday. Okay. All right, doesn't hurt to double check. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, we're gonna make pilot holes in all four corners. And what this is gonna do is give us a hole to stick our blade of the Sawzall through. A couple of things you want to remember when you're cutting a hole in metal. First thing and probably most important is eye protection. You don't want hot metal shards in your eyes. Ear protection. And the last thing the last thing is make sure you've got a metal blade and not a wood blade in your saw. All right, let's get to it. Cord management. Gail, you remember the last time we did this and I freaked out because this was the first hole we cut in the van? Yes, yeah, I not do. this time. Old hat this time. That's right, man. <laughs> I like to take just a metal file and shave off the rough metal edges. Good. 
And this is a public service announcement brought to you by Gale. Hey look, we're concerned about the environment and little kids bare feet. So if you look on the top of this van here, we got a lot of metal shavings and filings. We don't want those getting in the uh, little kids' feet or in the street in the water either. So we're going to clean that up right now. We're going to use a little alcohol here. Um, I initially suggested some bourbon, but Gail thought maybe some uh, isopropyl alcohol would be a little bit better. And we're just going to wipe this down. So the reason why you want to hit this with alcohol or some other kind of cleaning agent, like some mineral spirits might work as well, you just want to make sure this is really, really clean. If you have any dirt, debris, uh, little metal flakes, eventually what could happen is those just leave a, an extra area that water could get under, and then you've got leaks in your van. That's what we're trying to avoid right now. We want to have fans in the roof. We need the ventilation. It's really nice when you're sleeping but you don't want any water getting into the van. So just take a couple extra minutes, hit it with some isopropyl alcohol or some other cleaning agent, and make sure you have a really good clean surface for when you put your butyl tape and your flex seal down. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna get a little paint on this. This is some uh, undercoating paint. It is a automobile paint. It's by Rust-Oleum. You guys know I'm not sponsored by anybody. If I ever am, I will let you know this, but I do think Rust-Oleum does make a quality product. I use a lot of their products. Uh, you guys saw the other day how um, I used uh, some Rust-Oleum spray paint for the floor. Anyway, this is an undercoating. What I like to do is just take it. What I like to do is take some and Spray it in there and you've only got maybe about a minute or so before this stuff starts to set up. And you just want to hit the corners. You want to hit that bare metal. And again, this is just, you're protecting the paint. You don't want it to rust. It doesn't need to look great. It just needs to be coated. If it gets wet down here, you want to give that metal a chance to dry before it starts to rust. Per the directions for this roof adapter, Gail is applying three beads of RV roof sealant on the adapter. One eighth inch beads. One eighth inch beads, thank you Gail. And the reason why you want to apply three beads is as you compress it down, you want to leave a space for that uh, RV roof sealer to spread out. So don't think, oh, well, I'll just lather the whole thing up. No, you're gonna have too much squeeze out then. And I gotta say, nobody handles caulk like Gail handles caulk. Next, you wanna carefully set your roof adapter into place. Make sure you're lined up, and then start just using your hands to push it down. The next thing you want to do is take some scrap pieces of wood and some clamps and clamp down the roof adapter. You're going to let it sit for several hours or even overnight if you can to allow it to dry. After you've allowed the RV roof sealant to dry, you want to put a layer of butyl tape onto your adapter and then drop your fan in. I'm going to show you how to apply some butyl tape a little bit later on. Well, Gail got a little happy on us, and he dropped the fan in without uh, waiting for me to film it, but that's okay. I'm sure you guys know how that goes. All right, last thing that we need to do today is fasten this down with some screws. Next, we're going to move on to installing the front fan. It is a lot like installing the fan in the rear. There's just a couple of issues that we ran into and a couple of things that we did a little differently with the front fan. Oh boy, David. Yeah. I think you should come down and take a look at this.
All right, I'll be right there. So 14 inches with a little bit of air gets us awfully close to the second ridge here. Oh, well then let's back it up. You got how much room you got? We got an inch or two. I mean, we've got till here. You know, look, if we center where a sunroof would normally go, then all we have to do is back up approximately right in this space where a sunroof is supposed to go. So 94 and a half inches off of our lip. Yep, yep. Okay. But we'll measure it just to be sure. Okay. So, Gale was dead on on his cuts here, but we hemmed and hawed a little bit and we test fit the fan. And while the fan fits right as it's supposed to, we've got just a little bit of a lip that we're dealing with here on this side. So we're gonna take this lip off so that the fan will sit just a little bit more flush. After we do this, we're gonna talk about mounting a fan into this, I don't know what you call it, this bump out that the ProMaster has in the front. So imagine this is our fan. Originally, I wanted to mount the fan right here. That way we would have been able to use this great insert. Unfortunately, where this ended up, underneath, is one of those crossbars that supports the roof. So Gail and I put our heads together, and what we decided to do was mount the fan up in this bump out. I don't know what you call this, a bump out, a ridge. All the Pro Masters have this. I don't know why they do this. If you guys know why, let me know below because um, I think there's going to be a lot of people out there who are interested in why the ProMasters are designed like this. Anyway, we ended up not being able to use this cutout for this part. We tried to flip it over and put the fan in. We didn't like that. So, what we ended up deciding to do was mount this fan up here directly on the roof. You can see here where there'd be large gaps that we'd have to fill with butyl tape or flex seal. We flipped it over and we had the same issue, but this time it was between the fan and uh, the rubber gasket. So we took the gasket completely out of the equation and now the fan sits completely flush on the roof. So this is what we're gonna use for this front one. So while the back sets up, we're gonna use some butyl tape on this hole for the front fan here. What is butyl tape, David? Excellent question, Gail. I love the softball questions from you. Butyl tape is a product specifically made to install stuff in RVs. It's basically a waterproof tape that you put around the outside. You can do it on a, a uh, uh, roof fan like we're doing now. You can use it for windows like I think we're gonna do later because I think the, the big window I got isn't a self-sealer. I think it calls for butyl tape. 
So you'll see us use it on the side of the van uh, coming up here. But it's basically, and I don't know exactly what it's made out of, but it's basically just this rubbery, rubbery tape, this rubbery stuff. I bet you it's got butyl in it. It's probably. So, uh, Gail, what is butyl? Well, butyl is uh, its pretty hard to come by. It's actually a byproduct of cows. And um, there's parts of the cow where you can get the butyl from. Uh, the main part is the hooves. And uh, man, it's expensive because it's difficult to extract butyl from a cow hoof. Uh, the cows don't like it. It's a smelly, burning, flesh type of process. But, uh, and it does wonders on an RV van, butyl tape. Okay. Yeah, it is easy to work with. Um, it's not too hot out here today. I'd say it's probably what, low 70s? Yeah. But if you are working with this and it does get too hot, it can, as you can see right now, it's starting to kind of stick to the paper. Mm. What you can do is you can take it, throw it in your freezer for about 10, maybe 15 minutes, cool the tape down, and then this paper will come off a lot easier. All right, stick the fan in. Now, is there a certain way you'd put the fan in? Uh, yeah, you, you want the vent part, the dome part, up. Up, oh, okay. What about orientation? <laughs> so, like sideways? What I or... like to do is I like to make sure that, this is just me, I like to make sure that I've got the hinge facing the front. That way, if I end up taking off and I've still got the, uh, the vent cover open, if I forget to close it down, the wind is hitting it and kind of deflecting off of it, rather than if it's facing forward, the wind is hitting the vent and pulling it up. Makes good sense. Um, other people might have other ideas. That's just mine. Next, we're gonna screw this down and I'll show you how to use flex seal on this. But I've got a little bit more to do on these fans. I need to coat these areas with some flex seal to make them watertight. So what I've done is I've taken the butyl tape and I've just kind of pushed it up against the side of the seam of the fan there. Then I'm gonna take some 120 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna etch right along the butyl tape and scuff that up a bit to give the flex seal something to stick to. Once again, a little rubbing alcohol to clean up that area. Once that's all clean, we're gonna hit it with a little flex seal. This is absolutely amazing stuff. It is rubber in a can. Uh, you can do multiple layers. I figure I'm gonna end up doing probably three to four layers of flex seal around each one of these fans. I'm gonna prepare this area here for the window. This strut, whatever it is, support beam, this needs to come off. We're gonna use the angle grinder for that. Now, this is just held on with four little areas right down here. One, two, three, four. As I'm using the grinder, I gotta be careful that I don't pierce the skin of the van because that is a big old pain in the butt to fix. Nice job, David. And there it is. You'll get your screen time, okay? God, <laughs> it was a screen time. You will get, get your screen out. time, Gail. Oh my God, we got a prima donna on our hands. Okay, so we have laid out for our window. Our kitchen's gonna go here, all right? And I wanted a window for some ventilation for when we're cooking. We've laid out our window. We've got everything exactly where we want it. We're about to make a cut. A couple of things though with this. We've got a level. The first thing you need to do when you're building a van is take your level and throw it out the window. You cannot guarantee that where you are parked is level. Remember that a level 
levels with the earth. It doesn't level with what you're parked in, or it doesn't level with, with your vehicle. So I can put this up here, and if you come over here and take a look, even though I'm on a straight line right here, you can see where it says that I'm not level. So whenever you are building a van, take your level, and you can use it as a straight edge, but get rid of it. You're going to want to use carpenter squares, you're going to want to use speed squares, you're going to want to use T-squares. And yes, I don't have a speed square or a T-square here, but that's what we use. Take your level and get rid of it. All right, just like what we did before, we're going to drill ourselves a couple of pilot holes. Then we're going to get the uh, jigsaw and cut this out. There's a hole in the van. It's not the best looking cut we've done, but we'll clean it up a little bit. Lift her out, MacGyver. Beautiful. And the wood looks good too. Yes, thank you. How do we do? Well, uh, looks like you can use a little bit more. A little more? We can come down. Yeah. Nice. Here's one of the windows from the inside. This is an actual frame, this part here, that is attached by these screws. So what I've done is I've made a couple of cutouts right along here to give this fr give the the window a little more uh, a little more beef if you will to uh, to attach to these windows are made for an actual RV which is three quarters or so of an inch thick it's the sides of RVs are generally made out of plywood so I've made uh, about an inch and I've got two three quarter inch pieces of plywood here making this an inch and a half uh, for this frame to attach to. This brings this window out a little bit more. Anyway, as Gail was holding it on the outside, I was coming and attaching the window with these screws that are supplied with the window. And that's how it attaches from the inside. Well, we are all done. For the day. For the day, yes. What did we get done today, Gail? Well, we had a good time. One. Got a little bit of exercise. Uh, did we learn anything today? No, we never learned anything. No, I didn't learn anything. Uh, what did we do? We got we cut two holes in the ceiling. Put two really nice ceiling fans, reversible. Uh, oh, we got the ladder racks. Is it a ladder rack? It's a ladder rack ladder that the rack. solar panel is going to get mounted to. And we cut one uh, big old hole in the side of the van. That was satisfying. And he installed cut. a window. And installed a window. And installed two. Oh, yeah. Don't want that. Anyway, I want to say thank you very much to Gail. He spent about five hours working with me. Uh, that was awesome. 
I could have done most of this myself, I think. The ladder rack, um, probably not. But I could have done the fans myself. I could have done the window myself. But it would have taken me probably three times as long. Uh, I can't tell you how much I recommend if you're going to do something like this, you get yourself a gale. I'd loan you mine, but I like them too much, and you can't have them. Also, the other thing is, if you're going to go somewhere and do this, if you've got a buddy who's going to help you out and you're going to their place, make sure that they have a lot of tools. There, yeah. was, there were some things that I forgot, and I'm lucky because I keep a lot of my tools in Gail's garage. No, but it was... Thanks, buddy. What, what are you, 12? Anyway, I keep a lot of my tools in Gail's garage. That's actually not true. He's going to do it again. Well. <laughs> and it was nice because the things that I forgot, you know, like uh, my rasp. Gail was like, oh, no problem, I got one. Rat tail. My rat tail, whatever that is. Rat tail. Okay, my file. Um, my drill ran out of batteries at one point. Uh, Gail was like, no sweat, I got one. He just ran in and grabbed it. So, vacuum. Vacuum. Yeah. Anyway, if you're going to do something like this, grab a buddy, buy him a six-pack. It just makes everything go so, so much easier. You guys can also um, check out each other's measurements. You know, you may measure something, but then... Like, I would go, hey, Gail, why don't you double-check this measurement? Does this seem right to you? Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No. I think the uh, best thing is uh, getting a buddy to help you because it's just more fun to work with someone. It's just more rewarding. So. Yeah, working with somebody you like. Well, optional. Uh, Hi. What you looking at? We're filming right now. We're filming. Uh, oh. <laughs> Anyway, as always, guys, thanks a lot for coming along. There's going to be more van build videos to come. He's going to act like he's 12. <laughs> keep, keep adventuring. Keep building. We'll see you next time. Yes, indeed. It's a pleasure.